Hi, my name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food, and today I'm sharing some quick and easy dinners using one of my favorite pantry staples, rice aroni. And as always, I'll make sure to leave recipe links in the description box. Today we're making chicken fajita rice aroni casserole. So let me show you the ingredients you'll need for this recipe. You are going to need a box of rice aroni. Now the original recipe calls for Spanish rice aroni. I have a personal preference for chicken, so that's what I'm using. And you're also going to need the ingredients needed to prepare the rice aroni. A package of fajita seasoning, diced tomatoes and green chilies, and a can of cream of chicken soup, I'm using unsalted, some sour cream, a bell pepper and an onion, chopped cooked chicken, and shredded cheddar cheese. So we're gonna start off by preparing the rice aroni according to package directions. I've got some butter in the pan, and then I'm just sauteing that rice and vermicelli until it gets nice and golden brown. So I just added in the water that's needed for the rice, the seasoning packet, and a can of undrained Rotel, or if you're getting the generic, diced tomatoes with green chilies. I'm just gonna give this a good stir, cover it, and let it simmer until that rice is tender. Okay, so my rice mixture is done. I did let it cool a little bit, and now I'm gonna combine everything else. So the recipe actually wants you to combine everything in a separate bowl and then put it in a casserole, but I wanna save um, dishes, so I'm just putting everything into this skillet. So I just added in my onions, now I'm adding in my bell pepper, adding in my sour cream. Next, my cream of chicken soup. And finally, my chopped chicken. And I'm just gonna give this a good stir. I almost forgot to add my fajita seasoning. Okay, now I'm gonna give it a good stir. Okay, got everything all mixed up and I'm just pouring it into a nine by 13 baking pan. Okay, I've got everything all spread out. Now I'm just adding on that cheese. I did grate my own cheese just because I feel like it melts better than the pre-shredded. And now I'm going to pop this in the oven at 350 degrees for about half an hour or until that cheese is nice and bubbly. Okay, so here is the casserole. I just took it out of the oven about 10 minutes ago, so it's cooled a little bit. Just to add a pop of color, I shredded a little bit of lettuce and put some salsa right on top. You could also use green onions or anything else. So let me get this plated up and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here is dinner all plated up, serving it with the side of green beans. And this would also be really good with sour cream on top. There is sour cream inside of it as well. And then I've just got some lettuce and uh, salsa. So this is what we're having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. Tonight I'm making beefy rice aroni casserole. So for this recipe, you're going to need a box of beef rice aroni. The original recipe calls for cream of chicken soup, but every time I make this recipe, I prefer it with cream of mushroom soup. You're gonna need a pound of ground beef. You're gonna need crispy fried onions. The recipe calls for six ounces, which is this entire container. And to me, that's a lot. Normally, I use about half of the container. And you're also going to need some cheddar cheese. So the first thing we're doing is preparing the rice according to package directions. And while the rice is cooking, I am browning up that ground beef. Okay, so the rice aroni and ground beef are both finished cooking, and now I'm just adding my ground beef into the rice aroni. Next, I'm adding in that can of cream of mushroom soup. Again, the recipe calls for cream of chicken, but use, you know, whatever cream soup you'd prefer. And now I'm just gonna give it a good stir. Okay, so I just poured the mixture into this 11 by seven pan, and now I'm just sprinkling some cheddar cheese. The recipe calls for a cup, but we like a lot of cheese, so I'm adding more than a cup of cheese. 
And finally, you're just gonna sprinkle some French fried onions right on top. Again, the recipe calls for this entire container. That's just a lot of onions for us. So just sprinkle as much as you'd like. And then I'm going to pop it into the oven. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna pop it into the oven for about 25 minutes or until that cheese and onions are nice and golden brown. Okay, so here is everything all plated up, a quick and easy casserole, and it is so very good. Serving it with some sauteed green beans and a garlic knot. Here is the rest of the casserole. So um, the casserole that I made the other day, the chicken fajita casserole calls for a nine by 13, and you definitely need it because it does make a lot. This one also calls for a nine by 13, um, but you can definitely get away with the 11 by seven like I did. I think if you spread this one out too much, it's gonna dry out. But anyway, this is what we're having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. Today I'm making porcupine meatballs. So for this recipe, you're going to need some ground beef, your box of beef rice an egg, and some water. Okay, so we've already got our ground beef in the bowl. And now I'm just adding in the um, rice and pasta mix. I'm gonna hold that seasoning packet off to the side for just a little while. And I'm gonna add in my egg. And you can either use your spoon or your hands, but just get in there and mix everything all together. Okay, so now that I have everything all combined, I'm just using a little cookie scoop here. I think this is probably like one and a half inches so that my meatballs can be uniform. And I'm just kind of rolling them up in my hand and then I'm just gonna set them to the side. Okay, so here are my meatballs. I got about 21, um, out of that pound of ground beef. So now it's time to go to the skillet. So I've got my skillet on a medium high heat and I'm just adding my meatballs in there and I want them to get brown on both sides. Okay, so while my meatballs are cooking, let's go ahead and make that gravy. I'm just adding that seasoning packet to the water and I'm just gonna use a whisk and mix it all together. Okay, so my meatballs have browned. They're not cooked through and that's totally fine. Um, I'm just going to cover this and let this cook for about 20, 25 minutes or until all of that liquid has absorbed and those meatballs are cooked through. Okay, so here is everything all plated up. I am serving the meatballs with a side of broccolini. I um, cut one open so you all could see what it looks like on the inside. The rice is cooked through and so is the meat. So this is what we're having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time.